so tay, so tay, so tay, so fale. So tay, tay, so tay, so tay, so tay, so tay, so fale.
right now the sixth. So- that major six and have it lose that and an easy way to sing it is once you get this uh, flat seven it's only a half step and there's no note in between it's a very close half step down so it, it might help you think of it that way to, to catch that major six um, being it's a different color, it's a different sound that we haven't used yet. All right, so interesting enough, I noticed the names also. You got the fourth, which is fa, and the sixth, which is la, and here they blend nicely, and they both have a similar name, fa and la. Is there a reason for that? And just like you have, um, you have the minor third, which is May. May, and then you have the flat seven, which is Tay. So when you hit these two, Tay and May, they sound nice. Together too, right? And then you have Do, and you have So, which blend nice together too. Just something I picked out. I don't know if it's just coincidence or what, right? But uh, something to take note of. sounds, right? They blend nice. All right, let's keep going.
Now we'll focus on the fifth on that double stop. but I want to point something out. Do you guys notice how when you end on the fourth, it doesn't feel resolved? It's like you're up in the air still. You didn't finish your statement. So what I want to show you is what Jimmy follows with. He does a diff another idea to resolve it. So he goes... And then he follows it with... Ending on the root, which sounds great, right? You're right in there. Again. Jimmy. 
So I don't know if you guys have been checking the uh, the notes that I include, but uh, I did point this out, um, I believe, on the last set. And uh, I pointed out the fact that the fourth is not part of the chord at all. I mean, you have your root, your third, your fifth, and a flat seven. And those are four of the five notes in our minor pentatonic, right? So, um, which I, I just to, to note the third in a C7 chord, and this we've been doing everything in C. Well, the C, I mean, the, um, the third is an E, an E natural. But as you know, Jimmy likes playing the minor third. So that's a little thing we'll get into later. But just think of it as a third. There's a third in there. There's a root, there's a third, a fifth, and the flat seven. Okay? And in a way, I'll, I'll point on it. I've recently heard someone explain that due to the fact that you have a flat seven, because normally in the key of C, we would have a B natural. We would have a natural, we would have a, a, a seventh, but we flat it. And this gives us a more bluesy sound, a jazzier sound. And that flat, the presence of that flat seventh now starts to change things to where you can enter the minor third instead of the major third. That flat seven sort of opens the door to bluesier things, uh, the color, you know, however you want to refer to it. It sort of opens the door so that the, the minor third against a C7 chord, which has a major third, somehow it still works. Because is that flat seven. Now, why? Why does the flat seven do that? I don't know. Who knows why? Why are the, you know, Roy G. Biv, remember that? From the rainbow, the colors of the rainbow. Why are they in that order? It's just the way it is. <laughs> Who knows why it works, but it does. So I thought that was an interesting take. Uh, I recently watched a video where a guy was explaining the flat seven opens the door for the minor third, you know, but, you know, you could even include a minor third with a major seven, and that's known as like a harmonic minor sound, so there's all different ways to color it, you know, depending on the music, so I, I guess, you know, the recipe for bluesiness is a, is a minor third and a flat seven in there, you know, that's that's the recipe for blues. Uh, why, again, why? Who knows why? It's just the way the science of it falls, you know? So, I mean, there you go. I mean, basically, what we're getting at, because I'm kind of going off on a tangent on minor third versus major third, what I wanted to point out is basically the fourth is a stranger. It has, no, it has nothing to do with a C7... <laughs> Chord. Here it is. Right? That that guy, he's not in there. So, you know, this is why it doesn't feel resolved. Mm -hmm. Look. It's like something else has to be said, right? But Jimmy does. That's how he resolved it. Ending on the root, which is the chord tone, right? It's, 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 it's as deep as you can get, right? You're on the root. You're at home base. So, uh, you know, I just wanted to point that out just to keep some interest of things. Why does it work, you know? You could you could ponder these, you know, reasons. You could come up with your own science of it, beliefs. But uh, you know, I just wanted to share that with you. 
and give you some food for thought. I mean, uh, you'll notice in a lot of these phrases, if he ends like that, he's not done. He's, he's going to go somewhere. He's going to end on one of those. Like, for instance, he could go. Right? End on the root. Or he might go. Right? We've seen that little move. Minor third, root, and end on the flat seven instead. But hey, the flat seven is part of the chord, right? So it still resolves in a way, you know, but it leaves you feeling a little different than if we resolved on the on the root, because the root is like home base. You feel grounded more than anything. No doubt about it, you returned home safely, there you go, right? And now, <laughs> I could get into something else that's crazy, crazy, but I, you know what, I'll do it, I'll do it, all right, look, the flat seven. I, I pointed this out also. The flat seven, it, it gives a feeling that something is going to change. It, it's not like the root when you're at home base and it's all concluded. That's it. You're grounded. You're in, you're in the, you know, you're on that root. Now, when you, when you flip it over like that to the flat seven and you end the phrase on the flat seven, what's crazy is, People have said, I picked this up from a few guys, I can't remember exactly where, but it's been said more than once that the flat seven gives you a feeling that something else is coming. It's going to change, right? Now get this. Okay, so you go. You go. You're on that flat seven. If we go to the five chord, right? If we go to the five chord, the five chord consists of a G, a B, a D, right? And an F. Okay. Let's just focus on that. The root and the, and the third, right? Where's that flat Seven. Right there. Right? Take note. The, the five chord has its major third. The B right next to the B flat, which is the flat seven. Okay? So when you go like this. Now it feels like it's going to the five. <laughs> Oops, I hit. I hit that, but you got. Right? And then it goes. It's right there. It's a smooth transition from the flat seven to the third of the five chord, half step motion. We know this in classical music, that's a smooth transition. You love, it feels great when you're moving just a half step real close, right? So that flat seven starts to push it to the five chord, cause you got, you got that B natural right next to it. Okay, but I'm not done, because if you look at it like this, it's crazy, folks, I know. Look. Wait, wait, wait watch. Right? 
That was the five chord we just looked at. Let's look at the four chord. What's the four chord consist of? Well, we have the F, the A, the C, and we have a E flat, E flat, a E flat. Okay, right? Now, let's look at the notes that are close. Folks, do you notice it? You got the F, the root, a is the major third. C is the fifth. And the E flat is the flat seven. But we just got to look at what's next to that B flat. So the A. The third. The third of the four chord. Why? Right? The third of that F seven chord. So look at it. When it's the fifth. With the five chord. Right? The B flat. Right there, half step below it. When it's the four chord. It's right there, a half step above it. Above the third in the F7. The four chord, it's a half step above. The five chord is a half step below. So it makes a smooth as can be transition. You know, and, and that's why it pulls. It's pulling to, it's, it's giving you this feeling of change. This is the science behind it. You know, that's how I see it. Like you, that's how I hear it. You know, like you can hear it too. Look. Let's say we're going to the four chord. <laughs> it moves. I know this is crude because I'm not a piano player and they can play everything very smooth. But you see what I'm saying? You got, you, when you go, There you go, that's the five chord, or you can go. It works, that was a little sloppy on my part, but that's the science. I want to just lay it out for you to give you some, again, something else to think about. I know this is getting long. But that's fine, you know, it's just something to spark your interest, keep you, you know, you know, intrigued by this stuff. The science of it, you know, why it works, I don't know why, but why, like, why does a half step transition smoothly? It's close, you know, it's, it's why it works. And I know, like, in jazz, when you're playing all those very interesting chords, those substitutions and like things they always involve close motion you know so i mean we could be it's endless right we could we i could be trying to explain this stuff i just find it fascinating so i wanted to share it with you i have a passion for this stuff if you're like me you might you might find this interesting you know the the, the two or three that stuck with me you know at this point but that's all fine and dandy. Look, just keep doing these drills. You don't have to really understand why it works. Just that it does and it sounds good. You know, that's it's really what it's all about. What sounds good so that when you play it, you're happy. And that'll, you know, the listener will pick up on that and they'll like it too because they'll think it sounds good. If you're playing from your heart and you think it sounds good, that's all you got to do. And just take it from there. All right. So let's keep going. We finished this set. And, and uh, we finished the flat 
the flat five and the flat seven ideas. So we'll move on to something else, and uh, we'll pick it up from there. All right, good luck to you. Thanks for listening.